Christy, you're in St. Yetian, mate. Now, that is a famous football team from years back, I do remember. But what kind of area is it? Whereabouts in France? You're not wrong, actually. And it's, uh, I think it hosted a couple of um, matches of the Football World Cup in yeah. maybe yeah. 1988. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's just west of Lyon, actually, not too far away from the All Blacks. So it's kind of nice to be quite close to our trans Tasman rivals. Yeah, first match up is against Georgia Sunday morning. It's a hell of a test, isn't it? I mean, this is a side that are going to pick 15 Grizzly Bears, mate, and they all play tight end. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Every single uh, Wallaby or, or coaching staff has been trying to tell you that they are a, a side that's developed their game, that they've expanded, that they've got uh, backs now like Nashville, um, who can use the ball and who can kick and can play some rugby but this is let's be honest this is a side that the Wallabies should beat Uh, I know that Australia is zero from five but they've come up against three of the top you know four nations in the world in South Africa New Zealand and France over the last six weeks so they're in all sorts at the moment the Wallabies but I reckon against the 11th ranked Georgians they should be able to out muscle them even up front which has traditionally been their strength hasn't it how confident are you about getting out of this group Pretty confident is the is the short answer. Look, let, let, let's be honest. I, I've just said it there. They've come up against some good, strong sides, but really, like Fiji, they're sixth. Like, like they're they're the highest ranked side that the Wallabies will come up against over the next five weeks. If the Wallabies can't get out of this pool, Eddie Jones won't be there beyond October, mid October, wow. early October. Wow. I, I, I think I think I think the Wallabies will be fine, um, and I think they'll go through to a quarter final. I think they'll come up against England and Marseille. It's written in the stars. Eddie he will come up against his apprentice and Steve Borthwick, and I can only see one winner, and I think that's Eddie Jones. We've seen it. We've seen Steve Borthwick struggle under the pressure, the helicopter view that a, a head coach has required. Uh, England are in, in disarray, and, and more so than the Wallabies, who have got a, a proven coach. Uh, with a 90% win record in, in World Cup. So I think they'll be all right. Wow. I'm just I'm just, I'm just trying to process that, just trying to absorb that at the moment. So he's on that much of a knife edge. This is the guy that Rugby Australia, Hamish McLean, have invested so much money and they put all his, their eggs in his basket. He's coaching the, the Lions tour through to the next World Cup. But if he fails, well, when I say he fails, the team fails, if, if, if all turns custard in France, he's gone? Look, I, I think it'd have to be. You know, and I don't think it would just be Eddie Jones that would be gone. It would be Hamish McLennan, the, the chairman, that would be gone, I, I would imagine. I know that he's a, a person that uh, lives by the sword, that's bullish, that makes some big calls. But the reality is if the Wallabies struggle here at the World Cup and they don't make it past the pool stages, having axed Dave Rennie in mid-January, there's no, no way that the chairman can stay on beyond this, beyond this year. And, and I would imagine that Eddie Jones would follow suit thing is though as you say he's a wily old dog isn't he and he knows and he's known all year which is why I believe he has had the attitude that he has but you've, you're around him a lot more and correct me if I'm wrong but he knows that it really is just going to come down to one game it's make that quarter final you win a quarter final you're in the rugby world cup semi-finals all of a sudden you're back in the top four and everything changes yeah that's it and, and if you remember back in 07 I know that uh, the decision was made for, for Graham Henry to, to, to stay on but on the other side of the, of the equation, John Connolly and the Wallabies bowed out 12-10 to a pretty average English side, yet it was only a, a Sterling Mortlock penalty that was a couple of maybe the 78th minute and it just moved the last few minutes, almost like Reese Hodges' penalty down in Wellington in 2020, which looked like it was on for all money mm-hmm. and then obviously wasn't. I, I, I think I think the Wallabies will be all right. Uh, there'll be some upsets in this tournament, don't you worry. But it's just getting started a couple of days away. We're all very excited. And I'll tell you what, there's a there's a, a balmy atmosphere out here at the pub that I'm watching, uh, looking through this pub. We're the only person inside doing a bit more work. Christy Doran, the Raw out of Brisbane. We love talking to you, mate. You're such an integral part of the show. And I thank you so much for all the time that you always give us. Dangerous opponents all over this group. And I'm, and look, and I'm, not, I'm not being a smart ass by saying it, but you know, I honestly believe there's a, there is a feather between yourselves and Wales and Fiji. So who makes it out of the group alongside you? 
yeah, good question. I think Fiji will, will knock over Wales in the opening weekend of the tournament. Um, I know that Warren Gatlin's a proven, experienced operator, but it, it kind of just feels like... Um, yeah, oh, I just think that he, a bit like Gatlin's return to the Chiefs, which didn't quite go to plan, and maybe a couple of guys came through and a bit more development. I just don't know if Wales got it right there with Gatlin going back. A lot of the old guys going... Uh, departing, retiring, finishing up. Not too dissimilar to Eddie Jones, but the difference being that Wales had some success not long ago. They won Six Nations uh, not long ago. Um, and, and and this Wallaby side needed to be ripped up and, and spat out some of the old guys. I think Eddie Jones made a, the right decision to farewell a lot of the, the losers of, of Australian rugby over the last 10 years. I think Wales are in you know, a really problematic area. And I think Fiji are primed to give uh, this pool a shake, a quarterfinal against possibly England or Argentina a shake. Simon Rowe-Louis done a great job just ensuring that that Fijian spirit shines through. I spoke to one of their assistants, Brad Harris, uh, the other week before they beat England. He told me about the fact that they took 28 hours to get to semi Rajas village in one of the outer islands. And, what it did was they needed to rediscover what it is to be Fijian. And you could see that with how they've played over the last three weeks where they beat uh, England, of course. They pushed uh, France uh, 34-17, I think it was. They hung in the fight there. And they've got some serious quality now and so can some cohesion that's come through the draw. There'll be an upset or two. And I think Fiji being Wales on the opening weekend will be one of those great kind of moments in World Cup history. Just personally, you've had a, you know a bit of a ding dong and locked horns with Eddie at press conferences. Um, so just talk us through that. You were the guy that he was saying, weren't you? That you were Mister Negative as they were leaving, and he always picks on one journalist in that. So when you're in that position, mate, how do you how do you, how do you react to it? Do you, do you care about it, or do you just think, look, I'm just doing my job? Well, it probably wasn't just me. There was there was one other, but you're right. I was uh, pleading that I wasn't being negative, and if you could just answer the question, please. But Look, I think it's all, there's a game here with Eddie Jones. He wants to deflect. In that particular scenario, I think it just came down to the fact that Wallabies decided to go up to Darwin, have a press conference, which didn't mean uh, that was on Zoom. Only journalists were only allowed to answer, uh, ask one question. You had foreigners asking questions. It was a Cadbury all sorts kind of presser. And there wasn't a, uh, another follow-up to try to get to some of the detail, some of the uh, the, the answer, the questions that needed to be answered regarding guys like Michael Hooper and Quade Cooper, why they weren't in the squad. And so when are you going to ask your next first opportunity? That just so happened to be there at the uh, at the airport. Since then, you've seen Eddie Jones, a, a slightly different approach to things, been a bit more controlled. He had a 24-hour period where he didn't have to speak to anyone on the plane. But Eddie typically, I think... Everything he does, generally speaking, is calculated. That particular moment, I think he lost a bit of control, but I think he's found it. He's rediscovered it. He's back where he likes, which is tournament knockout footy. In terms of the Cipriani thing, how much of a distraction is is that? How many questions have been asked about that? Uh, because, again, I mean, I just find this pure all this kind of stuff. It's tacky. I mean, and Cipriani's obviously such a desperate man, isn't he? And you know, the extracts from the book about Eddie asking him about his sex life, all this kind of stuff. I mean, I suppose it giggles and it titillates those that it does. I just find it incredibly boring. I can't be bothered. But I would use it as ammunition at a press conference if I thought I might get a snap or a bite from Eddie. Is anyone doing that? Well, he will speak to the the media on, on Thursday afternoon. It will be very late, probably be 1 a.m. On, on Monday, on, on Friday morning, rather, when he speaks uh, New Zealand time, that is, uh, when he speaks to the media for the first time. He had... Uh, a quick conversation with a Daily Mail journalist uh, yesterday, Monday, uh, French time. And, look, it was fair to say he's, he's, he was disappointed by what he said, uh, used the F word, said it was a complete fabrication. I haven't heard from him since. But I'll tell you, looking at him at training today, he didn't look like he had too many worries there. Cast his eye over the Wallabies and, and his team as, as they all warmed up. We were booted out shortly after, but... I don't think it'll be a huge distraction. It will be something that he probably wouldn't have enjoyed, but much like Owen Farrell on the England side, that they, uh, you know, that they are aware that that guys like Danny Cipriani, 
uh, often put themselves in uh, in front of the team, and that's probably one of the reasons why he only played what was it, 16 tests in 10 years, and it probably tells the story, doesn't it? A guy of immense talent, great skill set, not too dissimilar to, to Quade Cooper, but he only played 16 tests, and uh, that's not enough for a bloke of of his skill set over 10 years. Two quick questions to end with. Who wins the Rugby World Cup? France. They'll beat New Zealand in the final. I have no doubt about it, but I think New Zealand will win the opening match on, on Friday night.